welcome. Thanks for tuning in. My name is Lauren and we are going to go through a vinyasa flow practice opening the hips. So we're going to start seated. I would suggest grabbing something to sit on. I like to sit on a block. If you don't have a block handy, that's okay. You can sit on anything you need to and sit in any position that you like. I usually like to sit in uh, Varasana, but you can sit with your legs crossed, your legs extended, whatever you need. But the hope is that your knees come a little bit lower than your hips. So just positioning yourself in a way so that that is happening in your body. That will let your hips relax. So allow your legs to relax, your hips to relax, but sit up tall, lengthen up through the crown of the head, really elongate the spine. Let your shoulders relax, let your arms rest wherever is comfortable. And if it feels okay, let your eyes softly close. And just notice how you feel. Noticing your body in this moment. Check in with your body. Maybe noticing if your skin feels cool or warm. Notice the feeling of your clothes against your skin, your body against the floor or whatever you're sitting on. Notice the way that it feels to be in your body right now. Then turn your attention to your breath. Notice your breath. Just observe and watch your natural breath. Noticing the pace and the rhythm. Notice the texture, how fluid or smooth it is. Notice where it goes in your body, your chest, your ribs, or your belly. You're welcome to stay here, just observing this natural, organic ebb and flow of your breath. This is a practice called Anapana, and you can stay here. Or we can begin to manipulate the breath. We'll come into a practice called Viloma 2. Viloma means against the grain or against the natural order. So we'll divide the breath into three equal parts. In Viloma 2, we divide the exhalation. So the inhalation will be a long, smooth, fluid breath. The exhalation will be divided into three equal parts. We'll be holding the breath for a moment or two, which is a perfectly safe practice, unless you're pregnant or trying to get pregnant. So if that's the case, skip this practice. Stay with your natural breath. But otherwise, it's perfectly safe. So to begin, exhale completely. Push all of the breath out of your lungs. <coughs> And then inhale a long, smooth, fluid breath in. Hold it at the top for a moment. And then exhale one third of the way, pause, hold your breath. Now exhale two thirds of the way, pause, hold your breath. Exhale three thirds of the way, push all of the breath out of your lungs, hold it at the bottom. And inhale naturally, exhale naturally. 
back to Paloma two. Inhale, a long, smooth, fluid breath in. Hold it at the top. Exhale, one third of the way, pause. Exhale, two thirds of the way, pause. Exhale, three thirds of the way. Push every last drop of breath out. Hold it here. Inhale naturally. Exhale naturally. We'll do two more. Inhale, a long, fluid, seamless breath in. Hold the breath at the top. Exhale, one third of the way. Pause. Hold the breath, but soften the shoulders and arms. Exhale, two thirds of the way. Pause. Hold the breath, but soften the throat, neck, and jaw. Exhale, three thirds of the way. When you think you can't breathe out anymore, keep breathing out more, but relax the muscles of your face. And then inhale naturally, exhale naturally. Last one, inhale along, seamless, smooth, fluid, breath in all the way, hold it at the top. Exhale two thirds of the way, pause, hold the breath, but soften your muscles. Exhale two thirds of the way, hold the breath, but soften the joints. Exhale three thirds of the way, completely release every last drop of breath, keep breathing out, hold it at the bottom, but soften. Inhale naturally, exhale naturally. Completely return back to your natural breath in a way that feels easy, effortless organic. Take a moment. Notice how you feel. Now slowly join your hands together in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra. Palms together, thumbs softly resting on the collarbones. If it feels right for you in this moment, you're welcome to set an intention for your practice. Ask yourself, what brought you to your mat? What is it that you'd like to manifest or gain in this practice? Give yourself a few moments to slowly repeat that word or phrase to allow it to settle in your heart. Slowly draw your chin in towards your chest. Bow reverently at the intention. Allow your eyelids to slowly flutter open, looking down at your fingertips. You can release your arms and slowly lift your head. Okay, all right, we will start to get moving. If you're sitting in a way that is asymmetrical, so with your legs crossed, change the cross of your legs and just notice how that feels very different, probably from the way you were originally sitting. That way you were originally sitting, you probably always sit that way. So try to do the opposite every once in a while when you can, on and more importantly, off your mat. Okay, we're gonna focus on warming up your spine these next few moments, so sit up tall, but relax the shoulders. Inhale, draw your belly forward, lift your chest, lift your heart, look up maybe towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, tuck your tailbone, draw your ribs back, chin to the chest, look down towards your belly button. Inhale, as you draw the belly forward, lift the chest, lift the heart, look up. Exhale, tuck the tailbone, draw the ribs back, chin to the chest. Do a few more just like this. Basically moving through a seated cat and cow. And as we get moving through the practice, there will be moments where you're gonna be working pretty hard. I'm gonna want you to feel like you're challenging yourself, but that comes later, once we're warmed up. So let yourself warm up, do this one more time each side. And then slowly return back 
to the center to a long neutral spine. So creating that length and maintaining the length. Inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, bring the right hand down, sweep the left fingertips over, really sweeping up and over. Inhale to the center, lengthen up. Exhale, bring the left hand down, right fingertips sweep. We'll continue moving just like this at the pace of the breath. Inhale to the center. Exhale into the stretch. So I mentioned that this is a vinyasa practice. Vinyasa gets translated lots of different ways. One way is to move at the pace of the breath or flowing at the pace of the breath. So even here, we are moving in a vinyasa style. And we'll get into one of the other translations later as we do that movement. But let's do this one more time each side. Again, in a vinyasa style, meaning just at the pace of the breath. Know that there's no rush, there's no hurry. Even in a faster pace class, you should never feel like you're running late or like you're rushing into the pose. Inhale to the center. Exhale, drop the arms as you turn and twist over to the right. Inhale to the center, lengthen up. Exhale, drop the arms, turn and twist over to the left. Move with your breath. Inhale to the center. Exhale into the rotation. Inhale to the center. Exhale into the twist. Maintaining the length as you twist. So oftentimes in this movement, we tend to slouch in the twist. Maintain length. Keep reaching the crown of the head up. So the spine is long and twisting simultaneously. Let's do this one more time each side. And then inhale to the center. Exhale, let the arms come down. All right, we'll come into tabletop. So I like to bring two blocks to the top of my mat, but you don't have to do that. If you don't have blocks, that's perfectly fine. But if you've got them, you might as well use them. All right, so here's where we'll start to work a little bit. Muscles are warmed up, at least in the torso, so now let's get them engaging. So hands under shoulders, spread the fingers wide. Tops of the feet down is usually what I prefer, but if you want to curl the toes under, that's fine. But knees under hips. Now, here we're going to maintain a long neutral spine. The longer we're here, the more you'll be tempted to let your ribs drop down and or let the heart sag down. So make sure hands are pushing and spine is long. Okay, so keeping the hands under the shoulders, look at the tip of your right thumb. That's going to help keep the neck in neutral and we're coming to a balance pose. So pick a dristi, a focal point that you can look at. The tip of the right thumb is a good one here. As you reach your left fingertips forward, thumb to the sky, like you're reaching your arm out to shake someone's hand. Keep pushing the right hand down, lift up and out of the right armpit. Now, firmly pushing through the left knee, shin, and the top of the left foot, reach the right leg back, push the heel back, toes point to the floor. Now, oftentimes the right hip wants to hike up, so make sure hips are level, ribs draw in, lift up and out of the right armpit. We'll stay here for just one more breath. Inhale, exhale, lower the hand and the knee, see if they'll touch the mat at the same time. Okay, same thing, second side. Push the left hand down, look at the tip of your left thumb, reach right fingertips forward. Fingertips forward, thumb to the sky like you're gonna shake someone's hand and reach the left leg back. Push the heel back, toes to the floor. Make sure hips are level, spine is long. Really push through the left arm. Your left arm should feel like it's working hard here. Okay, one more deep breath. Inhale. Exhale, return the hand and knee, let them touch at the same time. We're gonna do that one more time on each side, but with a variation to allow a thoughtful, conscious back bend. Okay, because back bending in this action isn't a bad thing, but when it's not your focus, when you're not doing it intentionally, that's where we really wanna um, check in with the form. Okay, so look at the tip of your right thumb, reach your left fingertips forward, right heel back. Now, you're more than welcome to stay still and stay right here, but we have the option to add a back bend here. So you'll sweep the left fingertips over to the left. Left fingertips will point towards the back of the room with the thumb towards the floor. Bend the right knee, grab onto the top of the foot, the ankle or the shin, whatever is accessible. And instead of just pulling in with the arm, resist with the foot. So the hand and the foot resist into each other, out in opposite directions, and then up towards the ceiling. So now you'll feel a little bit of a back bend, opening through the front of the torso, and some work here. You're really balancing. Keep looking at the tip of the right thumb. Take a breath. 
Inhale, lengthen. Exhale, return, hand on the knee, touch at the same time. Okay, last one. Look at the tip of your left thumb, right fingertips forward, left heel back. Really push down to lift up, engage, lengthen. You can stay, or right fingertips sweep over to the right, thumb points down to the floor, bend the left knee, grab onto the foot, ankle, or shin. Now, instead of thinking about it like a quad stretch, just drawing the heel in, kick your foot back, pull your foot forward. So hand and foot are resisting in opposite directions and then maybe up towards the ceiling. So working hard, but lifting up. Keep the back of the neck long, look to the tip of the left thumb, take a breath. Inhale, lengthen, exhale, return. Good, give yourself a moment, roll out your wrists, let your hips sway, whatever it is that you need before we continue to move. Okay, so we are really gonna get moving. We know things are warmed up. So hands under shoulders, spread the fingers wide, your middle fingers point forward. The creases of your elbows point forward. They often wanna turn in. That's not so ideal in the shoulder, so make sure they're forward. Lengthen your legs back into a plank position. Anytime we're here, you're welcome to drop to your knees. Just make sure you're not in a tabletop. Your hips should not be bent. There should be no wrinkles by your hip flexors, okay? So either on the knees or the toes, take a deep breath in. Exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. And give yourself a few moments to move in any way that feels good for you. Maybe pedal up the heels, shake the head yes and no. Sway the hips, it's probably your first down dog of the day or maybe of the last week or maybe longer. So move around a little bit. And then we're gonna really start to engage these muscles. So spread the fingers wide, inhale, shift forward, plank pose. Now make sure that the ribs aren't dropping down. Remember, back bends aren't bad, but here we're not looking for a back bend. So ribs are in, tuck the tailbone, inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. So here we'll move with the pace of the breath, vinyasa style. Inhale, shift forward, make sure the tailbone is tucked. Exhale, downward facing dog. Three more, inhale, shift forward, plank pose, stay strong. Exhale, downward facing dog. Two more, spread the fingers, inhale, shift forward, push the whole hand down, not just the wrist. Exhale, down dog. Absolute last one here, inhale, shift forward forward, tuck the tailbone, engage, exhale, downward facing dog, take a breath, now deeply bend the knees, inhale, look forward, exhale, travel forward, forward fold, Uttanasana, feet are hip distance apart, knees might be bent or not, they might be bent a little, might be bent a lot, but upper body is passive, just surrendering to gravity, Allow your upper body to feel very heavy. Take a breath here. Push the heels firmly into the floor. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold, heels down. Inhale, rise all the way up. Maybe add a bit of a back bend. Bring the hands through to the heart and take a deep breath. We'll move into some sun salutation C's and then some A's. So we'll be moving more or less here at the pace of the breath. So inhale, circle the arms up. Exhale, hinge of the hips, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, step the right foot back. Inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, shift forward, plank pose. You can always drop to your knees. Exhale, slowly lower all the way down. Pick your hands up off the ground and inhale, use the muscles of your back to lift your upper body. Inhale, lower the hands, exhale, downward facing dog. Pick up the right foot, reach the right heel back, inhale, exhale, draw the right knee forward towards your belly, quietly place the foot in between your hands, runner's lunge. Inhale, exhale, step forward, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Push the heels down, inhale, rise. We're gonna do that again, Surya Namaskar C. Exhale, hinge at the hips, Uttanasana. Inhale, Ardha Uttanasana. 
Exhale, runner's lunge, step the left foot back. Inhale, exhale, downward facing dog, Adho Mukha Svanasana. Spread the fingers wide. Inhale, shift forward, plank pose. Keep the strong core. Exhale, slowly lower. Lift the hands, lift the chest, using the muscles of your back. Keep the back of the neck long. Inhale, lower the hands. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhale, pick up the left foot, reach the left heel back. Exhale, draw the knee forward towards the belly, quietly place it down, runner's lunge. Inhale, exhale, step forward, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha, Uttanasana. Exhale, fold forward, Uttanasana. Inhale, rise up, push the heels into the ground. Now we'll transition to Sun Salutation A. Exhale, hinge of the hips, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, right into plank pose with either your right or your left. We're going to do it a few times, so try to switch it up. Okay, so the body is long, heels reach back, crown of the head forward. Inhale, shift forward, exhale, slowly lower. Now bring your hands under your shoulders, maybe even farther back, closer towards your ribs. Push the hands down, roll the shoulders back. Inhale, cobra. Inhale, exhale, downward facing dog. We stay for a few breaths here. So notice what it is that you're feeling. Noticing if your heart rate is elevated, if your breath is labored, even though you are still now. One more breath. Now deeply bend the knees, inhale, look forward to the space between your thumbs, exhale, travel forward, walk, step, or jump into forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, fold, Uttanasana. Push the heels down, inhale, rise, circle the arms, two more like that. Exhale, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, Plank pose, maybe step back with that opposite foot. Start in a strong plank, spread the fingers, push down, inhale forward, exhale lower. Hands under the ribs and inhale, rise, Cobra Bhujangasana. Inhale, exhale, down dog. A few breaths here. Notice what you're feeling. Notice what you're feeling in the back side of the body. Probably some length in the backs of the legs and the calves and the hamstrings. Notice how your lower back feels. One more breath. Now deeply bend the knees, inhale, look forward, exhale, travel forward, walk, step or jump, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, fold. Push the heels down. Inhale, rise, fingertips to the sky. One last, Surya Namaskar A. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, plank. Now this could be your last plank if you choose. So make it count, spread the fingers, push the hands down, tuck the tailbone, engage the abs. Inhale, forward, exhale, lower. Inhale to your back bend. Exhale to your down dog and a few breaths. Again, just checking in with what you're feeling. Down dog might feel like it takes a lot of work, but it should be comfortable. Everything that you ever do in a yoga class should be comfortable. It might take a lot of work. It might take a lot of effort, but you're able to stay with it. You're able to breathe. Take one more breath. Now deeply bend the knees, inhale, look forward, travel forward, walk, step or jump, forward fold, Uttanasana. Inhale, lift halfway, exhale, fold. Push the heels down, inhale, rise. Maybe add that back bend, bring the hands through to the heart, take a deep breath in Tadasana. Okay, 
Let's bring the feet closer together so the big toes are touching. There is still a little bit of space between the heels. Now your weight is back in your heels. You can wiggle your toes. Inhale, fingertips to the sky. Exhale, drop the hips towards the floor. So since the feet are touching, the knees should also be touching. And you can wiggle your toes, your weight's back in your heels. You feel the work in your quads, the tops of your thighs and your glutes, not your calves and not your knees. We're protecting these spaces, but working these. The spine is long, so make sure this is not a back bend. Again, back bends are okay, but we don't back bend in all of these poses. So the spine is long and neutral here. Fingertips reach up, shoulders relax, take a deep breath, utkatasana, chair pose. Inhale, exhale, fold forward. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, step the right foot back all the way back to the long stance. Pivot the right foot so that the right heel is very firmly down on the ground. Deeply bend the left knee. Ground the heels. Inhale, rise, warrior two. You're a madrasana two. So your right toes are more or less pointing to the right. Left toes point to the front. You're drawing the left shin and knee forward so that the quads are working hard. We're basically still in a chair pose in that front leg. So the quads and the front leg should be working hard. Now you lengthen your spine, reach the crown of the head up, reach the arms out, but relax the shoulders. If it's comfortable in your neck, turn your neck to look over your left middle finger. Warrior two for one more deep breath. Now inhale, flip the left palm, exhale, reverse warrior, sweep your left fingertips up and over. Right hand can come to the calf, the thigh, the waist, maybe take a half bind, reaching that right arm around maybe to your left ribs or maybe to the top or inside of your left thigh. And then look wherever is comfortable in your neck, you can look down, forward or up. Generally looking up is a deeper stretch in the neck and looking down relaxes the neck, so listen to your neck. But keep pushing the left heel down the left knee forward, but left fingertips to the sky. Feel the length through the left side of your torso. Take a breath. Now keep the legs as they are. Inhale, return to warrior two. Exhale, side angle, shift forward, bend the left elbow. Forearm rests on the thigh. Make sure it's not elbow to knee. We want bone to bone, not joint on joint. Right fingertips might reach to the sky or at a diagonal reaching your right fingertips up and away, but your right heel down and back. So this side of your body, the right side of your body is along the line. Okay, now keep deeply bending left knee, left quads, should be working hard, should be feeling it certainly by now. And oftentimes in this pose, we tend to draw the ribs forward. So can you draw your ribs in, create a wrinkle in the front of your shirt? And then maybe take a half bind here, bringing the right arm towards your lower back. Maybe take the extension of this pose, left hand comes down to a block or to the floor, to the inside or outside of the left foot. But continue to draw your right shoulder back, turning your heart to the ceiling. But if you've got that half bind, make sure that the arm stays in close. We want to stretch the shoulder, but in a very safe way. Let's take the one more breath. Okay, now we'll all bring the right hand to the right hip. And we're going to come into a balance pose. Notice that your hips are facing the side of the room. We want to keep them that way. And reach your left hand, maybe if you've got a block underneath it or with it, forward towards the top of your mat, towards the front of your room. And shift your weight forward into your left heel and your left hand. Allow the right foot to lift and float up off the ground, lengthening that right leg. So with your right hand at your right hip, Point your belly button to the side of the room, not to the floor. Allow the right leg to lift and flex. And if you're looking at a stable spot on the floor and you feel very stable, you might reach your right fingertips to the sky. Ardha Chandrasana, balancing half moon pose. Keep pushing the left heel down, right heel back, right fingers to the sky. Take a breath. We'll meet in warrior two, so deeply bend the left knee, let the right foot touch down, rise up, arms outstretched, stay for full breath. Inhale, exhale, cartwheel the arms, step back, downward facing dog. 
Now here I'll give you three to five breaths to transition however you'd like before we do that on the second side. You're welcome to rest in something like child pose or tabletop, or maybe you take a vinyasa, which is the other translation, which would be from downward facing dog, inhale, shift forward, plank pose. Exhale, slowly lower all the way to the floor. Inhale to your back bend. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a breath. From downward facing dog, deeply bend the knees, inhale, look forward, exhale, travel forward, forward fold into Nasana, inhale, lift up halfway, exhale, fold, push the heels down, inhale, rise, fingertips to the sky, maybe add a back bend, bring the hands through to the heart, pause, take a deep breath. Okay, now I've switched which directions I'm facing, so I'm still facing you, but you stay at the same position that you've been at this whole time. We're going to, again, bring the feet closer together, big toes to touch, space between the heels. 70 to 80% of your weight is in your heels, so you can easily wiggle your toes. That's to help your knees. Inhale, arms up. Exhale, hips down and back. Chair pose, utkatasana. So draw everything back so you're protecting the knees and working the quads. Make sure that the ribs aren't poking forward. We don't want to feel this in the back, so draw the ribs in. Lengthen the spine, soften the shoulders. Inhale. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, step the left foot back all the way back. Pivot the foot, ground the heel. Deeply bend the right knee. Inhale, rise, warrior two. You're a Vajrasana two. Okay, so firmly pushing both feet into the ground. Right knee forward. Left heel and the pinky toe side of that foot down and back. Spine is long, and we tend to draw our sit bones back and ribs forward, so can you realign here? Lengthen, reach, soften, take a breath. Okay. Inhale, flip the right palm, exhale, reverse warrior. Sweep your right fingertips up and over. Now the right heel draws down, right knee forward, but right fingertips up and back. You can look wherever is most comfortable. Left hand might rest on the left leg or maybe take a half bind. Again, with any half bind, make sure that the arm doesn't splay away. That's a little too much in the front of the shoulder, which is a very vulnerable space to begin with. So if you keep it close by, if you choose to do that. We'll stay in reverse warrior for just another breath. Stay strong through the legs, light and lifted through the arm. And then inhale, return warrior two. Exhale, side angle, <clears throat> excuse me. So left fingertips can reach to the sky or up at a diagonal. So the left side of your body is one long diagonal line. So we're not looking for it to sweep up and over. We want a long straight line. Hopefully that's what I've got. I don't have a mirror in front of me. Or maybe you take the half bind. Again, the arm will stay close. Think about reaching the fingertips towards the thigh and less about the elbow away. So elbow and forearm close to the body, but think about reaching those fingertips down. And then maybe the right hand comes down, take the extension, bring the hand down to a block or the mat to the inside or outside of the foot. Now lengthen through the back of the neck, you can look down, forward or up. Side angle pose, Parsva Konasana, stay strong in the leg. One more deep breath. Now bring your left hand to your left hip. Notice that your hips and your belly button point to the side of the room. We want to keep it that way. With your right hand, you might have a block in your hand. Reach it forward. I'm going to scoot back. You stay where you're at. You're going to reach the block forward. Shift your weight into your right hand, into the right heel. Allow the left leg to lift and float. Right leg will lift. Foot will flex. With your left hand at your left hip, open your hips. From a bird's eye view, your left hip should be stacked on top of your right hip. We're not pointing the belly button at the floor. Point it at the side of the room. Now keep your eyes on a fixed spot, something that won't move, and maybe left fingertips to the sky. Ardha Chandrasana, balancing half moon pose. Right hand pushes. Left, I'm sorry, right heel pushes. Lengthen through the left side. One more deep breath. We'll meet in warrior two. Deeply bend the right knee. Let the left foot touch down. Rise up through the torso. Take a breath. 
Inhale, exhale, cargo the arms, step back, downward facing dog, three to five breaths to move in any way that you'd like. It might mean a vinyasa, it might mean to rest and stay still, whatever you need. Just keep breathing. One more deep breath. From downward facing dog, deeply bend the knees, inhale, look forward, exhale, travel forward, forward folded, Tanasana. Inhale, lift up halfway, we're gonna hold it here for a few moments. So keep reaching the crown of your head forward, your tailbone back, bring your hands to your hips, and heel toe your feet out so they're about mat distance apart. Turn your toes out so they look like the letter V, sort of in second position here. Inhale, exhale, drop your seat towards the floor. Let your knees deeply bend and allow your hips to drop. Now, if you've got blocks or something you can sit on, you're welcome to sit on something if it's uncomfortable to let gravity pull your hips down. It will certainly be a deeper hip stretch. And that's where we're going. We're about to start with these deeper hip stretches. So listen to your body. You might be doing a totally different variation of what I'm doing, and that's okay. All right, so a few things here. We want the heels on the floor, so you might have to take the feet wider, or if your ankles are very flexible. Oftentimes people think, I can't, can't get into this pose because of my hips. Your ankles are being asked to do a deep stretch here, and that's usually what's restricting people in this pose. So if your ankles feel okay, you might bring your feet closer together, but we want, again, the heels on the floor. Ankles are getting a deep stretch. If you wear a lot of high heels, this might not happen for you, and that's okay. So feet can stay a little wider. That's what feels good for me today. I'm gonna scoot back a little. Okay, so you can stay here. You can rest your hands on the ground, let your hands come to your heart. If you want more in your hips, you might use the leverage of your arms in your legs. We're gonna stay here for several breaths. I'm gonna let you choose what you'd like to do. You can stay here. Maybe you take a bind, if you're familiar with taking the bind here, or this is a good opportunity to take an arm balance, which people usually like to do in vinyasa classes. So crow or crane is a good, uh, good one to come to here. So for that hand set up like you're gonna be in a plank, Spread the fingers wide, middle finger forward. We're going to want the creases of the elbows forward because basically your arms are in a chaturanga position. So you're gonna lift your hips up towards the ceiling. There's two things that are crucial to this pose that often get neglected. One is hips to the sky. I can't even imagine what this looks like right now. But hips up to the sky is very important. The other second important thing is to look forward. Looking back is gonna make you fall back. You wanna lift up, look forward. And then bend your elbows, chaturanga arms. Let the knee or the shin rest on the triceps. Let one leg lift and float. And then allow maybe the other. So allowing the feet to float up off the ground. Think about uh, Ardhashandrasana, tree pose, warrior three, any other balance pose you know, you don't jump into it. You lean into it, you ease into it. You slowly shift the weight of your body in from one part of the body to another. So it's the same thing here. Don't jump into crow pose. I often see students do that. So wherever you're at, you might be in malasana. You might be just working on letting one foot lift here in crow, in bakasana. Wherever you wanna be, stay for about three to five more breaths. Noticing how you feel. Making sure you're listening to your body not your ego. Take one more deep breath if you're in some arm balance. And then we'll all meet in Malasana. We'll all meet right where I'm at in this deep yoga squat. And then from here, we're just gonna take a seat. You can bring your hands behind you and let yourself kind of come back. <sighs> okay, so that was our last effortful pose. Now we're going to get into deep stretches. You still should be putting in a little bit of effort, but not nearly as much as uh, the arm balance if you took that. So here's where I think blocks really come in handy again. If you don't have blocks, that's okay. Okay, but we'll meet in tabletop and we're gonna be kneeling for a little bit 
one knee at a time. So you might have a blanket, a towel, a pillow, something to put on your knee, but if you don't, you can always just put a kink in your mat and there you are, you've got more padding. Okay, so I like the hands on the blocks. Again, if you don't have them, that's perfectly fine. But you're gonna step your left foot forward in between the blocks until I really need this stretch today. This is good, okay. So left foot forward in between the blocks. Now, from wherever it landed, we need to make sure that the ankle and knee will be stacked even when we come forward. So crawl the foot forward another inch, maybe more. Okay, and then, so now your ankle should be a little in front of the knee. That's good. Now, anything that's touching the floor or blocks, push down so you lift up. We wanna make sure we're not letting gravity pull us down into this pose. It should not feel like a heavy, relaxed lift pose. We want lift, squeezing, active, engaged. We're working a little bit, right? And then allow the hips to come forward. Maybe a little, maybe a lot. And then when you come forward, now the hope is that these two are stacked, that your shin is a vertical line from all directions. Okay. Now again, I like the blocks at this height. It works for me. Your torso and your thigh might touch. That's okay. But I don't want them resting. Again, we don't want that downward slumpy feeling. So whatever you need to do to make that happen. And really the reason we're in this pose is to stretch the right hip flexor. It's a pretty small spot. I probably only feel it about a golf ball size worth here. It's where your thigh meets your torso in this crease that's normally here when you sit, this sort of wrinkle or crease in your, in your clothes or your skin. We're stretching that space. So allow the hips to come forward, but also think forward and up. We don't wanna slump down. We won't, don't wanna slouch down. Think forward and up. And we're gonna stay for about two more breaths. Okay. And then allow your hips to come back a little bit. Use your left hand to come to the inside of the left foot, bring the block if you were using it, and crawl your left foot to the left edge of your mat and then recenter hands under shoulders. Hands under shoulders and making your arms a straight line, including the blocks, making this one long line is the most stable for the shoulder, which is a very vulnerable joint to begin with. So straight line. Now, <clears throat> you might let the hips come forward a little bit, get back into the hip flexor, but we really wanna get into the left inner thigh. So in this variation, option one, you've got about five or six here, is to stay here where your left arm and your left leg make contact with one another. They don't have to squeeze. They're just touching each other. Okay, you can stay here. You can dial your left toes out over to the left to about a 45 degree angle. And then you might, I'm gonna back up just so you can see. And then you can let the left leg fall away. Like you're rolling to the inside edge of the foot, pinky toe side, bottom of the foot will come up off the ground. Okay, so again, hands are still on your shoulders. You just allow the knee to fall away. Now, you might be feeling something in the right hip flexor, the left inner thigh. You do what you need to do so you can stay here. You might lower the heights of the blocks. You'll feel more in the left inner thigh. You might get rid of the blocks. I'm not sure if I can demonstrate this, but you might come down onto your forearms. Oh, maybe I can, all right. Forearms might rest on the blocks on any height or right on the floor. But the lower your chest comes to the floor, the more you're gonna feel in your left leg. So be somewhere that feels good. So that's a good example of just because you can do a pose does not mean you have to do the pose. I could drop my forearms down, but it really didn't feel right for me. So it's not worth it, it didn't feel good. So we're gonna stay here for about five more breaths. So pick where you'd like to be and take smooth, fluid breaths. on your forearms, come on back up to your hands. If you had blocks but got rid of them, grab them again. 
plant the left foot down onto the ground, left toes point forward. Now we're gonna stay with this side. <clears throat> so draw the hips back and allow your left foot to come over to the opposite edge of the mat, over towards the right edge of the mat. Bottom of the foot will come up off the ground, pinky toe rests and allow the outer part of the shin to rest. We're coming to pigeon. Okay, so most people are familiar with pigeon but it's really a complicated pose, so make sure you're setting yourself up properly. Starting with the front of the body, we really, in an ideal world, I'm not sure I've ever seen anybody practice this pose this way, but in an ideal world, the top of your mat and your front shin would be parallel, like an equal sign. That often does not happen. It's okay if the foot comes a little bit closer to the hip, but don't let it come all the way down. Then that's way too much pressure in the knee. So. Try to keep that right foot up a little bit. I'm sorry, the left foot up by the right hand. Keeping the hips level, slide the back leg back. Now, oftentimes, you end up rolling to the left. So you might use a prop to prop yourself up or just be very thoughtful about it. I, in my head, I just think draw the right hip down as opposed to the left. And that back leg is straight, top of the foot down, toes point straight back. That foot often wants to sickle in, protect the ankle, point your toes straight back. Now, now there's so many different variations of pigeon. If you'd like to take a different one, you're more than welcome to do that. But option one is to be upright, pull your heart forward. Really, it should feel like cobra in your upper body. So it's not just a lift, it's a lift and a broadening of the collarbones. Squeeze the shoulders down and back or maybe you fold forward. Just like before, you can use the blocks or use whatever prop you've got, or maybe you just let your forearms come to the floor. Maybe you stack your fists and rest your forehead, stack your hands, maybe rest your forehead right down on the ground, but come into some version of pigeon, Ekapada Rajanakasana. Noticing what you're feeling You've been working with stretching the hips, but your hip is a complicated joint, so notice exactly what you're feeling in this moment, and stay for about five more breaths. Your head is resting on something, slowly allow it to lift. Bring your hands under your shoulders. Use the strength of your arms as you inhale to rise. Pause with your torso upright for a moment. And then we'll come out of the pose, hook the back toes under to slide that back leg forward. You can come into tabletop. Down dog sometimes feels good. Or maybe just let the hips sway, but give yourself a few moments, a few breaths. Sort of transitioning, because obviously we're about to do all of that on the second side. Okay. All right, we'll come back to tabletop. If you've got blocks, grab them, and we'll step the right foot forward in between the hands. And then from wherever it landed, because it might have landed with this vertical shin here, that's fine, but because we're gonna draw forward, we wanna crawl the foot forward. Okay. So anything that's touching the ground, or blocks, or any sort of support, push down to lift up, and then allow the hips to come forward. Here's when we wanna focus on stretching the left hip flexor. So in your right leg, the part that's got this really deep crease here, but in the left leg, that part that's real long, there should be no wrinkles there. But we want the hips to come forward and up, not down. There should be some muscle, muscle activation here. Okay. So opening through that hip flexor on the left side, 
If you've ever heard of your psoas, your psoas is one of the hip flexors. That's sort of the hot topic this last, these last few years is lengthening your psoas. That's what we're doing here. So stay for about two more breaths. And now we'll allow the hips to come back. Bring your right hand to the inside of the right foot. Crawl the right foot to the edge of your mat and then recenter hands under shoulders. Again, that's the safest position for your shoulders here. Now, you could stay here. Arm and leg will stay in contact with one another. Just stay here. You might dial the right toes out. You might let the right knee fall. Let the bottom of the foot come off the ground. Rest on the pinky toe side. Listen to your right side. Your right side is different from your left. I'm not even suspecting. I could say I know that. Your two sides are not the same. And so you might stay here. I'm going to stay here. I've injured this side, so I know that I need to be upright a little bit more. But you might get rid of the blocks. You might lower down into forearms. You might take any variation that you would like and allow yourself to come into a stretch that is comfortable that feels productive, that feels beneficial, but is not so much that you're thinking, ow, you're not wincing, you're not making a face. That means you've gone too far in any stretch. Doesn't matter if it's for your hips, your shoulders, your spine, whatever. You shouldn't be making a face, thinking, ow. You should be able to <sighs> feel good in the stretch. So take two more breaths, feeling good in this stretch. You're on your forearms, come on back up. If you had blocks, grab them again. Plant the right foot down. Draw that foot in. Now we'll come to pigeon on the second side. So I like to bring my hands a little bit farther forward so that when I walk that right foot, it stays closer to the top of the mat. And again, it's okay if it comes back a little bit, but we don't want it all the way down. That's changing the rotation in the hip and again, a lot of pressure in the knee. So the foot needs to be fairly close to the top of the mat, as, as close as it will comfortably go. Outside edge of the foot, the calf, the shin, and the outside edge of the knee is on the ground, and then you might slide the back leg back. Now we wanna keep the hips level, avoid dropping the right side. So keep the hips level, think the waistband of your pants is parallel to the floor, like an equal sign. All right, hands stay on the ground, maybe you lift, broaden, stretch the front, think cobra in your upper body. Or maybe you lower down any amount to the blocks, to a prop, to the forearms, forehead rests, whatever you need. And again, instead of allowing the right side to drop, I often think push the front of my left hip, like my left hip flexor towards the floor. Keeping the hips level, left toes pointing straight back, toenails on the ground. Pigeon pose for five more deep breaths. If you're resting your forehead on something, slowly lift. And bring your hands under your shoulders. Push your hands down. Inhale, lift the torso. Pause upright for a moment. And we'll return to tabletop so you can hook the back toes under. Slide that leg forward. Draw the front leg back. Take a few moments. Move in any way that feels good. That loosens things up because you were staying in stillness in some deep stretches for a while. Okay, 
And then we're gonna give the hips a break. We're gonna come onto our back. You don't need any props. So if they're gonna be in your way later, you can move them, come onto your back. Take just a moment here. Really grounding with the earth beneath you. So you really haven't been resting and relying on the earth quite like this throughout the practice. So just a breath here. Okay. And let the arms come out in opposite directions, palms facing up. Excuse me. And then knees bent, feet flat. Scoot your hips over to the right a few inches and let the legs fall to the left. We're going to shift the focus to the spine for our cool down and final relaxing pose before Shavasana. So if you need to make any adjustments, you're welcome to do that. If you want to take a different leg variation, crossing the right leg over the left, lengthening the right leg, whatever you need to do. My hips, I think, have had enough, so I just want to focus on my spine, but you do what your body is asking. Your body is different from my body. So our arms will lengthen out in opposite directions, and even though your legs fall to the left, can you keep your right shoulder down to the right? And then maybe you turn at your neck to look over at your right shoulder, and allow yourself to relax. Again, really feeling supported by the earth beneath you. Let your body soften, coming into a passive, easy stretch for five more breaths. your head is turned, slowly return it to the center. And then slowly return your legs back to the center. Recenter your hips. Return everything back to symmetry as best as you can and take a deep breath. And then scoot your hips a few inches to the left. Let your legs fall to the right. And again, take any leg variation you'd like. We want this to be a comfortable, passive stretch. Something where you can really relax the muscles, the joints, the body all together. So even though your legs fall to the right, can the left shoulder stay down and to the left? Maybe you turn at your neck to look over your left shoulder. But allow yourself to relax. To soften. Let the muscles fall away from the bones. Be passive and effortless here. Five more breaths. If your head is turned, slowly return your head to the center. 
Return your legs to the center. Return hips. Return back to symmetry. Pause. Notice how you feel. Inhale, exhale, hug your knees in towards your chest. Take a few moments here to move in any way that feels good, knowing that Shavasana is right around the corner. So sticking with something that feels easy and relaxing, something that will help you ease into Shavasana. So maybe a happy baby or a full body stretch, but something that takes very minimal work. Give yourself just a few more moments here. And then you can settle into Shavasana. So allowing your legs to lengthen against your mat. Arms rest about a foot away from your body with your palms up. Let your eyelids feel heavy so they softly close. And let your body rest. Let your body relax on a very deep level. The muscles, the joints, the bones, your organs, your skin, your cells. Relax on a very deep cellular level. Soften everything. Release any and all tension, stress, or tightness. Allow your body to relax and feel soft. Allow your breath to be at ease and effortless. Let your mind slow down and rest. Find softness on the outside but also softness on the inside.
gently deepen your breath. Take deeper, fuller, longer breaths. And allow those breaths to softly propel movement throughout your body. Let your head rock from side to side. Run your thumbs over the rest of your fingers as you wiggle your toes. Roll your wrists and ankles. Move your arms and legs. You can reach your arms overhead, stretching as if you just woke up from a long nap. Take a deep breath in. And as you breathe out, hug your knees in towards your chest. And slowly roll over onto either side, resting your ear on your arm to support your head and neck. Keeping your eyes closed and using the strength of both arms, Push down into the ground and come up to a comfortable seat. And take a moment here to thank yourself for making it to your mat today. And maybe reflect on your intention. Loka Samasta Sukino Bhavantu. May all beings have happiness and the causes of happiness. May all beings be free from suffering and the causes of suffering. May all beings dwell in bliss, free from suffering. May all beings dwell in equanimity, free from attachment and aversion. Now slowly join your hands together in front of your heart in Anjali Mudra to seal our practice. We'll chant the sound of Om one time. You're welcome to listen or join me, but the sound of Om is said to be the most sacred and oldest mantra. It exists in all living things and unites all of us together. So we'll chant the sound of Om one time. Let's start with a deep and clearing breath. <sighs> Inhale for Om. Acknowledges, respects, and bows to the light or the good in you. Namaste. Thank you.